thing that's really important anytime you do an energy problem is to make sure you identify important locations in the picture. In this picture, it's kind of already done for you. For example, uh, the letter B is printed right there, and that's one of our important locations because that's where the roller coaster starts. Um, and the letter C, and you know, there's a D, there's an E, those are all important locations in this problem. So um, it's just good to identify where those locations are. And by the way, the important locations are, first of all, places where you need to find something. Like the very first question here says, if point C is at a height of 23.5 meters, calculate the speed of the coaster at C. So C is important to us because that's where we want to figure something out. The other really, really important spot is a location where you know everything about the object's energy. That means you know about its speed, because kinetic energy is one half mv squared, and you know about where it is on the y-axis, because uh, gravitational potential energy is equal to mgy. And so when you read this question here, b is a location where we know the speed. It says it's going one meter per second, and we know its location on the y-axis. The diagram shows us it's 47 meters above the ground. So that's why b is an important location in this problem. So um, the other thing that's important to do, because where something is on the y-axis is part of this equation, you just need to establish where you want y to be equal to 0. Actually, you can do that anywhere you want to as long as you're consistent. In this problem, it makes sense to make the ground where y equals 0, because in the picture, that's already where they're measuring all of these distances from. Like the 47 meters is being measured from this location. The 38 meters is being measured from this location. So it makes sense to say that that's where y equals 0. Another thing I like to do to set things up is since kinetic energy has to do with speed and potential energy has to do with y, at each of these locations, or each of the locations that are important to us, I like to write down what I know about the v and the y. So for example, at B, the V is equal to 1 meter per second, right here in the statement of the problem. And the Y is equal to 47 meters. That's true at B. How about at C? Um, the V is a question. It's something that we're going to have to try to figure out. But the Y is equal to 23.5 meters. Later on, they're going to ask us to figure out the speed at D. So there again, uh, I know this is getting a little crowded, but down here, the speed at D is zero. The Y is also zero. I mean, it doesn't say that in the picture, but hopefully it's fairly obvious that it's right there at ground level. Um, we need to figure out the speed at E. So the V at E is uh, unknown. Whoops, I made a mistake there. This is supposed to be question mark. We don't know the speed at D, but the Y is equal to zero. Um, the speed at E is unknown, but the Y is equal to 38. And then Okay, and then that's what we're trying to figure out. All right, so let's start in on this. Let's see if we can do part C here and figure out the speed of the coaster at C. So we're going to use our energy equation, which is WNC equals delta U plus delta K. Let's talk about WNC for a moment. NC stands for non-conservative, work done by a non-conservative force. Now that's contrasted with work that's done by a conservative force. For this class, for honors physics, the only conservative force that we're going to deal with is gravity. When gravity does work, it creates potential energy. So we're taking care of what gravity does with this part of the equation. So this right here represents work done by any force other than gravity. So when you look at your problem, if there's work being done by any force other than gravity, you've got to somehow include that on this side of the equation. Now in this problem, we certainly have gravity. That's what's making it go down and slowing it down as it goes up. So we certainly have gravity, but we don't have friction right here. Assume there's no friction. Uh, we don't have a motor. We don't have a person pushing. So there are no other forces besides gravity doing work. So we can put a big zero here. So if gravity is the only force that's uh, doing work on your object, just make this zero. And that happens a lot of times in honors physics. So now on this side of the equation, if we're trying to find the speed at C, we're going to, our change in potential energy is going to be between C and B. Remember, change in something is always final minus original. So that's why I have C minus B. And the reason I'm comparing it to B 
is because we know everything about what's going on at B. It's a known spot. And then this is going here to be the kinetic at C minus the kinetic at B. So let's start putting in values. So the potential at C, I'm going to use this equation, M, G, Y. And so um, the roller coaster has a mass of 500. G is 9.8. Y stands for the Y coordinate at C. That's why I wrote that down, 23.5. And that's what I have there. Now minus the same thing at B, 500 times 9.8. And now I need the y-coordinate b, and that's 47. So that right there represents the change in potential energy. Now what about the change in kinetic energy? I'm going to use this formula right here. I don't know the speed at c, so I'm just going to have to write 1 half 500 vc squared. That's our unknown. Minus, what about the kinetic energy at b? Well, it has a speed of 1 meter per second there. So we have 1, one half times 500 times 1 squared. All right. Now there's a couple things I want you to notice here. Maybe they're important, maybe they're not. But one thing to notice is that every one of these mathematical terms has a 500 in it. That means I could divide this side by 500. I could divide that side by 500. The 500 cancels out. Literally, we didn't even need to know the mass of the roller coaster because the mass 500 canceled out. So just wanted to point that out to you. Secondly, I want to point out to you that the change in potential energy is going to be negative. In fact, let's calculate what it is. All right, I canceled out the 500, so I'm not going to include the 500 in this calculation, but 9.8 times 23.5, and then 9.8 times 47, and I'm going to subtract them. So that's giving me negative 230.3. So that's a negative change. That's a negative change. Over here, I'm going to have um, 1 half vc squared minus, uh, and then this is a half times 1 squared, which is really just minus a half. Uh, and, and even though there's a minus there, um, this is going to end up being a positive value. This is a negative value, by the way, this all equals 0. And this is what the law of conservation of energy is all about. If you have a negative change in potential, you're going to have a positive change in kinetic. The potential that you lose becomes kinetic. Energy doesn't come from nowhere. It just changes back and forth between these two different forms. All right, let me finish the algebra uh, for this here. I would probably uh, add the numbers together. So negative 230.3, I can add uh, with negative 1 half, which is negative 0.5. And so that gives me negative 230.8. And then we still have plus 1 half vc squared. I'm going to add 230.8 to both sides of the equation. So I get 230.8 equals 1 half vc squared. Multiply both sides by 2. And so that's uh, 461.6 equals vc squared. And then take the square root of both sides. And uh, that gives me 21.48 meters per second. That is our answer to the speed at C. So why don't we go on and figure out the speed at D. Same equation, WNC equals delta U plus delta K. Same situation where only gravity is doing work, so the WNC is zero. Now I have a choice though. What I'm going Where am I going to calculate the change between what two locations? I'm interested in D, so D is going to be one of my locations. But then should I compare D to C, or should I compare B, D to B? And the answer is, it doesn't matter. You can do either one. You can find the change between D and C, or you can find the change between D and B. It doesn't matter. Now, I prefer to always use the spot where the original given information was, because that's safer, less likely to be a mistake there, B. So that's what I'm going to use. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do the potential at D minus the potential at B, uh, plus the potential at I'm sorry, plus the kinetic at D minus the kinetic at B. So I'm going to do those two changes. So let's see what that looks like. Well, at D, we have um, the mass, 500, times 9.8, times 0. The y position at D is 0. Minus at B is 500 times 9.8. The y position at B is 47. 
And then the kinetic energy at d, again, we don't know that. So I'm going to do 1 half 500 times the speed at d squared minus, and then I have to do the one at b, which is 1 half times 500 times 1 squared. Okay, and then that's what I have to solve. Once again, you could cancel out the 500 if you want to. Maybe this time I won't cancel it out. We'll just see what that looks like. So this right here is just going to be equal to zero. And then I need to type into my calculator 500 times 9.8 times 47, um, which is also there's a negative there. So negative 230,300. And then that's plus uh, 250. Half times 500 is 250 v d squared, and then minus a half times 500 is 250 times 1 squared is still 250. So that looks like that. I'm going to combine the numbers together. So negative 2,000, 230,300 minus 250 is negative 230,550 um, plus 250 v d squared. I'm going to add 230,550 to both sides of the equation, giving me 230,550 equals 250 VD squared. Divide both sides of the equation by 250. And let's see what we get. 921.2 equals VD squared. Take the square root of both sides. And that gives me 30 point three five meters per second okay that's the speed at D and maybe I will quickly at least set up what's going on at E by now you should be pretty comfortable with this same equation WNC equals change in U plus change in K WNC is zero again I'm going to compare E once again to B so kinetic at E minus kinetic at B um, at E, we have 500 times 9.8. What's the Y coordinate? What's the, what's the Y position? 38 uh, minus 500 times 9.8 times 100. And then the kinetic energy part of this equation, 1 half times 500 times speed at E squared uh, minus 1 half times 500 times 1 squared. That's the equation you would have to solve. Just to solve, save time, I'm not going to write all this out that I'm about to do, um, but I'm going to calculate it real quick here, and we'll get an answer as I type this in. All right. and, uh, uh, looks like I'm getting uh, the wrong answer here. All right, I did something wrong there when I typed that into my calculator, um, but you can calculate that on your own and uh, and get the right answer. I think it's around 13 meters per second, but somewhere I made a mistake as I was doing that. Let's let's actually move on to the last question here, where it says calculate the total mechanical energy that the roller coaster has at the following locations. So mechanical energy, sometimes I symbolize that with an M, literally is just kinetic plus potential. That's all it is. That's all that mechanical energy is. So for example, at B, to calculate the mechanical energy at B, I would just do 1 half the mass, which is 500, times the speed at B, which is 1 squared, plus the mass, 500, times 9.8, times the Y coordinate at B, which is 47. That's all I need to do here. It's going to give me the right answer. So 500 times 9.8 times 47 and then uh, that's going to be plus 250 basically and that gives me uh, 230,550 joules energy is measured in joules so then it says calculate the mechanical energy at C okay so that means I need to do 1 half m times the speed at C squared now that's something that we calculated uh, a little while ago I'm just going back to my papers to find that we got 21.48 for that, 21.48 squared, plus 500 times 9.8 times the height there, which was 23.5. So let's see what we get when we do that on our calculator. 21.48 squared times 250, um, 500, oops, 500 times 9.8 times 23.5, add those things together. And look what I get, 230,497.6 joules. 
I just want you to compare these two numbers to one another. They are really, really close to one another. And in fact, the only reason that they're different is because I rounded that number off a little bit. If I hadn't rounded off, these numbers would be exactly the same. And so you know what? The mechanical energy at D, the mechanical energy at E, those should all be the same too. They should all be 230,550 joules. That's the law of conservation of energy. Energy isn't created or destroyed. It just changes from one form to another. So sometimes, like up here, there's hardly any kinetic energy. There's a lot of potential energy. But then here, when you've lost some potential energy, you've gained some kinetic energy. And at D, there was basically no potential energy, and it was all kinetic energy. So the energy just literally moves back and forth between kinetic and potential, but the total amount stays the same. And again, that's the law of conservation of energy.